Morning peeps, good morning everyone. How are we all doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. We're on the way to 40,000 subscribers. Um, we've just reached 36,000, so thank you very much. To be honest, we probably would have got 40,000 ages ago if I was a bit more active on the channel, but the target was 40,000 by the end of the year, and we might just do it. Anyway, enough of that shit. Let's talk about this mess. What a mess. I did a video a couple of days ago talking about what Tyson Fury, AJ, Errol Spence, Terence Crawford, um, and I had a rant in that video, didn't I? I went to talk sport, chilling, feet up, getting ready for my show, and then on the screens in front of me, so in my studio in talk sport, I've got like several screens in front of me, and like on the screen, Sky Sports News, breaking news, Conor Ben relinquishes his British boxing license, and I was like, what? the fuck is going on? It's funny, actually. I got a few um, DMs from you guys saying, Ade, I know you're not going to talk about this because you're our DAZN company man. I was like, what? I will talk about this. Come on, guys. Like, stop that shit. I will talk about a subject. Now, don't get me wrong. I might not be able to go as deep into the subject as I once did. You know, the old school Ade on the green chair, but I will still talk about a subject if I feel like it's worth talking about. And this, I think, is worth talking about. Um, I just think the whole thing, and I said it already, I think it's a whole heap of mess. And I, you know, one thing I said, as soon as this kind of broke, this Conor Ben um, failing a drug test, as soon as it broke, and I think we all found out at the same time, I was like, Conor Ben needs to get in front of this immediately. Like, immediately. Like, don't let Eddie speak for you. Don't let your manager speak for you. Don't let your lawyer speak for you. You speak. You speak because this is going to be your reputation that's in the mud, especially if you are innocent. You need to jump in front of this and say, what the fuck is going on? Like, nope. Especially now, because obviously he's released a few statements and we're going to go through those statements. But especially now that um, he's come out and said, I failed two drug tests. You jump in front of this immediately and say, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And look, some, some will believe you, some won't. But you jump in front of it and say, I don't know what's going on. My team are going to look into this. I have no idea. It could be this, it could be that. We're going to have a look at this and sort this shit out. And look, again, you're going to get some that believe and you're going to get some that are like, oh, he's chatting shit. But you, you're going to get at least some that believe. Right now, Conor Ben's in a situation where I think 99% of people don't believe him. And that's because, for me, and I could be wrong here, you didn't jump in front of it immediately. Because you've let it kind of build and build and build and not say anything and lawyer say stuff and Eddie say stuff for you. And now with this British Boxing Board of Control, you removing your license, it looks so bad. It looks so bad. And it's not just that. You've had the stuff with Nigel, Ben, his dad, obviously, and, and uh, Chris Eubank Sr. and Nigel coming out and saying stuff. Like, you have got to take it upon yourself to get in front of it. Because now it's so difficult to get the right side of it. I, I think so anyway. It's so, so difficult. Anyway, let's um, quickly uh, read the statement from the British Boxing Board of Control. I'm sure all of you guys have read it, but obviously we've not covered it. This is what they said in a statement a couple of days ago. Conor Ben was called by the board of the British Boxing Board of Control to attend a hearing to deal with allegations of mis misconduct uh, pursuant to Rule 25.1.1. The hearing took place on the 21st of October 2022. On the morning of the hearing, Mr. Ben voluntarily relinquished his license with the British Boxing Board of Control. In accordance with its rules and regulations, the board determined the allegations following the hearing at which Mr. Ben was legally represented. The allegations of misconduct against Mr. Ben were upheld. Now, again, you know what the problem is with this type of thing? Now that he's relinquished his license, the conspiracy theorists amongst us are going to say, oh, one second, if he's relinquished his license, that means he can't get a ban. Right? That's, what, that's what people are doing. And this is why I feel like everything, every step, since we found out about this um, positive test, I think every step has been wrong. And I think this, again, is a wrong step in the eyes of the public. Now, in the eyes of sort of the legal team behind the system, it might be the right step, right? If Conor Ben's going to get a ban, this might mean he gets a lesser ban. We don't know. I don't know how this all works. But the most important people here are the public people, us. We're the most important, right? Because the public can create a career and break a career. It's just, it's just how it works. And if the public don't believe you, it's very, very difficult to come back from that. It's very, very difficult. So when you do things like sort of say, okay, I'm going to throw my license away, people are like, one second, if he throws his license away, 
Does that mean the British Boxing Board of Control can't suspend him? This is what people are saying. It's all over social media. Now, whether or not that's true, and Robert Smith did go on TalkSport and he didn't deny or confirm that's true or not, but whether or not that's true, that's what people think. It goes back to when um, this incident with Chisora and Hay, uh, when they fought in Germany. Was it Germany? Yeah, Germany. Um, at the time, Chisora had a, a license, so the British Boxing Board of Control suspended him, can suspend him. David Hay didn't. So they couldn't do anything. Now look, if David Hay had applied for his license, he probably might not have got it, but he didn't have a license so they couldn't suspend him. So people are gonna look at this and put two and two together and get fucking whatever number they want. Now, Conor Ben did release a statement straight after that on his own social media. Let me see if I can find it. I'm not gonna read it all, I'm sure you guys Actually, we can quickly read it all. Uh, Connor's focus at the time is solely on clearing his name. This annoys me as well because it wasn't released by Connor. I, like this is again, it's Connor. It's lawyers doing stuff on behalf of Connor. But look, regardless, uh, the board, however, has made it extremely difficult for Connor to focus on doing that by its conduct of an unfair and biased procedure. In such circumstances, Connor decided not to renew his license, which had lapsed. Connor told the board that if it did not accept that his license has lapsed, then he renounces it. When did his license, um, when did it run out? That'd be interesting to know. Bear in mind, he was supposed to fight three weeks ago. Uh, he strongly refutes the allegation of misconduct for which the avoidance of, it, for which, for the avoidance of doubt is not in relation to the VADA issue and firmly believes that an independent tribunal will reach a wholly different conclusion. At the appropriate time, Connor will speak out on this and the doping allegation to the extent that he can whilst legal proceedings are ongoing. In the meantime, he reiterates in no uncertain terms that he is a clean athlete. Okay, you know what, yeah? There was an athlete um, a, a few years ago, um, a runner, Tyson Gay. I don't know if you know him, the fastest American I think there's ever been, if I'm correct. I think he's the American record holder for 100 meters. Now, He's probably one of the only people that have failed a drug test and just openly admitted that I fucked up. But he didn't really admit that. But what he did say was, you know, someone in my team let me down. So he um, basically he got in trouble because there was a cream that um, supposedly was performance enhancing. Right. And he said someone from his team let him down. So by the letter of the law, he's guilty. Um, but in the eyes of the people, people didn't look at him as a cheat. You know why? Because they got in front of it immediately. He says, you know what? Hands up, hands up, someone from, someone from my team fucked up, they let me down, um, I'll take the punishment. And he got a two year ban, but it was reduced to a year. And not many people, I don't know if you guys are athletics fans, but not many people look at him as a drug cheat. Like when people think of sort of runners that are drug cheats, you automatically think of the likes of Ben Johnson and, and Justin Gatlin and others. You don't think of Tyson Gay, because Tyson Gay admitted that you, there was a wrongdoing I don't know how it was a wrongdoing, but it was a wrongdoing in my camp. I'm going to take responsibility for it. He got in front of it and it's done. It was over. Tyson Gay came back, qualified for the Olympics, ran American records and had a decent career. And I just feel Conor Ben, by stalling, stalling, stalling and stalling, and by everything being wrong, 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 it's kind of made it difficult now for the public to be on his side. Understand this, the public love Conor Ben or at least loved Conor Ben. I'm still a massive Conor Ben fan, public loved him. And I felt like if he got in front of this early, there wouldn't be all this negative talk now. Now it's negative talk after negative talk. Conor Ben released a few statements, didn't he? Uh, on Michael, I think I saw it on Michael Benson's Twitter. Let me see if I can quickly bring it up. Let's see. Um, Okay, one second. There's, there's, uh, there's loads of statements here. You guys can all go on to... Um, all right, here, here's a couple. Um, this was from yesterday. Um, Conor Ben on his drug test. The traces were so low, there was no benefit. Um, that's not a good line, by the way. That's not going to help. I've got the best scientist on this. I, I'm spending a lot of money trying to prove my innocence. I don't want to run away from this or hide. My innocence matters to me. See that last bit. Now, imagine if Conor... And look, again... Connor might have wanted to. Me knowing Connor, me having known Connor now for a couple of years, I feel like Connor would have wanted to get in front of this immediately. That last line there, I've got the best scientist on this. I'm spending a lot of money trying to prove my innocence. 
I don't want to run away from this or hide. My innocence matters to me. Now, again, whether or not you believe Connor to be true, if Connor said this immediately, like, I don't want to run away from this. I'm not going to hide. My innocence matters to me. People are like, okay, cool. I, th I think there would have been more of like, you know, let's hear him out. Come on, let's hear him out. Come on, he, he doesn't want to run away from it. He's not hiding. But the problem is, some will say he did run away. Some will say he did hide. And that's not helping. Um, Conor Ben on his positive drug test, this is more. Part of me thinks if people are portraying me as the villain, I might as well be the villain. But I didn't want to be the villain because I'm innocent. I just want my innocence to be proven. Um, I wouldn't want to fight without this being resolved. It baffles me that people think I've cheated after seeing me on TV for so long. What am I like with my team, family and dad? Am I a serial liar? Uh, trace amounts were found, tiniest of traces. Only thing I can think of is contamination. Why would I sign up to VADA and then take this? If you Google this substance, it stays in your system for months. Do I look like an idiot? Again, you know what? This is, oh, it's gonna be so difficult to get the right side of this. And it's not just because Conor Ben didn't say things immediately, it's because of that Dr. Usman that then decided to vanish off thin air and delete his page, that doesn't help. Um, things like tiny traces isn't gonna help because people are not gonna care or listen to that, are they? Um, but th there's there two things here. I think Connor did say that there was a failed um, drug test. Yeah, okay, the first test was taken on the 25th of July and came back late August. Second was taken September 1st and came back September 23rd. Um, I feel, and look, I, I don't know if this is an Eddie Hearn problem, a DAZN problem, a Sowland problem, a Connor Ben issue, but as soon as you fail the first one, as soon as that first one comes back, everything should pause then. Everything should pause then, and you get in front of this immediately, you say what you need to say, there's been a problem, we're looking at it, for now, the fight's off. Because no one did anything, until the article came out really, and was it, the Daily Mail, the Guardian, it just looks so bad. I, I can't help, like, hopefully everyone understands this, everything just looks so bad. And I am, look, I would love, absolutely love Conor Ben to be innocent here. Absolutely love it. I'd love it to be uh, some sort of contamination. And that's happened before. There's, there's been some. I mean, a famous one is Yoel Romero, um, UFC fighter, now fighting in Bellator. Um, I think USADA popped him for something. He like, literally, angrily, vehemently said, no, what are you talking about? He then sued the company of the product he got and they then done tests on it and they felt that their stuff was contaminated. And he got, I don't know, he got, I think he got like 25 million or something. Go and read about it, it's true. So th it can happen, it can happen. But what Yoel Romero did, as soon as Usada said you have popped for something, he literally lost his shit. There was no lawyer that was gonna stop him from talking. There was no one like an Eddie Hearn talking for him. He spoke for himself immediately. And that's what Conor Ben hasn't done. Look, we wait and see how this is gonna play out. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. I, I do wonder, with him giving up his license, I, I do wonder whether or not Conor Ben will try and get a license and fight somewhere else while he fights the case with the British Boxing Board of Control, if that makes sense. So look, Conor Ben could have his next three or four fights in America. He could, he could apply for a license in um, Nevada or New York or California. He could do that whilst he goes through his own ship with the British Boxing Board of Control. But um, there will probably be a ban. I'm not quite sure how long. Um, obviously people, the four year figure has been floating around for a first time offense. Um, if that's the case, then look, he's 26 now. It's gonna be difficult to come back from that. Not because 30 will be old, it's just, Four years out the ring is four years out the ring. I mean, it's difficult to come back from that, isn't it? So look, I I, I wait to see what will happen. Um, he spoke in his own statement there about an independent tribunal. So you do wonder if he's going to go to um, I can't remember what, what what it's called now, the arbitration of sport. I can't remember what it is the term. It's probably going to go there, and then we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, not looking good. Not looking good at all. Um, but we'll see what happens, we'll see what happens. It's difficult to talk more on it because, again, I feel like the information is coming piece by piece. It's coming piece by piece. But right now, I think what they're trying to say is that, is that whatever they took, I'm guessing whatever it was, was contaminated 
with this clomiphene. Is that what it is? I forgot what the drug name's called now. But we'll wait and see. Um, yeah. All right, people. Peace.